And it's where there's dirt that's more difficult to get off because I assume it's got damp and it's kind of formed some kind of solid stuff that's gone off on there. This modulator area is certainly the worst of it. Some of the capacitors around here have got like a white substance on them so I don't know if that's leaking from the caps or if it's just corrosion of the aluminium housings of the capacitors. I'm not sure it could be a, a bit of a mixture of both it's very difficult to tell but I think this is probably going to need a good recapping and so I see all the crust that's come off of this already and this is just off of the board literally just bits pouring out of these connectors. Now uh, this particular connector on the end here, this, I think this is a floppy drive, this is actually swollen up along this edge here so I don't think that's actually going to be usable at all. Yeah, it looks like there's definitely some wet got in here or some some damp you can see where it's all collected on the back so that's going to need a good probably a good clean up and sand and maybe some paint um, the real question is whether the membrane will have survived this uh, I think without giving it a bit of a wipe down it's, it's going to be difficult to know it may be it certainly looks like all this crust is on the back, so it may be that the front side will have gotten away with it. And there's some dirt, that seems to be more greasy and gungy than anything. But yeah, that's, that's probably going to be okay, a bit of careful cleaning. So we've got all the usual rubber domes. These have got quite a bit of dirt on, so in this case with these I will probably clean them wash them first. Something I've noticed with the A600 keyboard is when you're pulling these keycaps off, 
you really need to hold the plastic case in or the plastic back panel for the keys quite near the key because if you don't if I do this here this flexes quite a lot and it could actually crack and damage it so you need to have some pressure around the key that, that's being pulled to stop that from bending um, spreaders underneath the keys and the larger keys I would imagine they're the only one that's got one is the space bar this is probably a uh, part of a cost cutting exercise and uh, this is the LED for the caps lock light so I should put that somewhere safe so you can see on the underside here it's just only the space bar's got this extra spreader attached to it this is certainly harder to remove than the um, A500 keys the trick with these is trying to keep them straight as they're pulled up so you don't want to leave them over at an angle too much otherwise they could break and this, you can see the state that these um, these are in are just absolutely filthy all down the edges and this itself is uh, absolutely covered in muck and say like almost like a soil it's quite a gritty whatever it is it's very gritty so I do think it's either been in a loft or outside or something like that okay so the tab key does seem to have a metal bar under it and you can see the giveaway to this this is these two little indentations here on the back I actually didn't spot those it was the the fact that there's a bar visible down the side here which also actually looks like it's started to go green as well uh, I think the space bar is going to be the same yes yeah, so on the sorry the um, the enter key is the same we've got these here so there'll be one there so I will need to be a little bit more careful with them so just lift that up enough as you can hear that's now clicked and released and that's actually just come away these um, plastic tabs on these keys look like they're different to the others they're open-ended which means it's easier to attach and detach this uh, spreader bar thing from the key whereas on the A500 these were a complete circle which probably means they're stronger but makes it more difficult to take the keys off And again, that's the same. Um, there's no easy way to get these metal bars out on here. On the the 500, you could you could slide them up or down on the actual plastic casing. So that meant there was no tension being put on these little plastic clips that are holding them in. So these are just going to have to be lifted out. These need to come out because they're going to need cleaning somehow and then the space bar the last one so just a bit of pressure either side and that's that's released these plastic clips I can get the spreader bar off and then it's just connected as the other keys are with one of these plastic um, standoff things. Now, uh, now in lifting this, I think probably the same as with the 500. If you pull it at the edges, there's a risk that this could bend and then crack somewhere along here. So you need to grab it further towards the middle and then pull it up, and that should save doing any damage to the key. And we've actually got a spring here as well with a load of crust on it. So yeah, that's uh, pretty filthy. So having had a good look at this board, I've decided that I'm going to take off uh, the some of the connectors. So I'm definitely taking this floppy drive connector off because you can perhaps see it's 
it's all swollen along this edge because of the rust. I'm going to take both of these ports off because they're the female variety instead of the male, so it's really difficult to get in there to clean uh, the, the holes out. Whereas at least with these pins you could theoretically clean them up a little bit. Uh, although they may all get removed, I'm not fully decided yet. Uh, video connectors, not great either, but again at least I could perhaps clean that up enough to get a signal out of it for the time being. The modulator I also want to remove. I've had a bit of a look at some of the schematics for this and it does look, I think the modulator's down here, it does look that all the connections to the modulator are inputs uh, so I should be able to remove that without affecting anything. Sometimes on the older systems, certainly from other people's videos I've watched, people remove the modulators and it seems to mean you get no video out of anything at all then. So there must be some kind of other circuitry in the modulator that then feeds back out to the, the rest of the board. But in this case it doesn't look like that's, that's what's happening, so hopefully that won't be a problem. There was also this crystal oscillator that had broken off from down here. I wasn't entirely sure what that was for and again looking at this diagram here it's uh, it's on here somewhere and it's something to do with the PAL video signal so that feeds this this encoder chip here and then I think that's what gives us the composite output so I'm really going to need to perhaps get that put back on to test the uh, the video output because well I was initially intending to use the composite just to test it instead of the video port just to make things a bit simpler but obviously without this crystal that's not probably not going to be possible looking at this diagram. I did think initially that perhaps I'd be able to clean clean this up and then connect back to the the pins on it but having taken a further look it's a, a bit of a case of what pins is this one pin barely hanging on for its life there and just a blob of rust so I think that's toast. So I've got one of the well I've got a couple of these on order so hopefully they'll come along. Quickly looking at this diagram again though, I don't think this crystal is going to affect anything to do with the video output from the standard 23 pin video connector. So that's fed straight from the Denise through a few other bits and pieces and then straight out to your the video port here. So it may be that I'll be able to test it anyway. I can perhaps hook it up to one of these converter boards. This is one I bodged up for the previous swag meet, so I might be able to plug that in and test it. But I just thought the composite would have been nice as a test piece, but obviously in this case it's not going to work. I've also managed to get some replacement 9-pin connectors for the joystick ports. These aren't terrible, but I think it's probably just going to be as well to just replace them anyway. I might as well, as I've got some new ones. The only thing with the new ones is often seems to be the case. They're not, not really made anywhere near as well. You look at the... The pins on them are very thin in comparison to the old ones. They've got these nice thick brass looking contacts or copper copper or whatever it is. So I think that's that's the order of the day in removing these sockets. Try and clean up these audio outputs. And I, I will replace these at some point, but if I can clean them up good enough just to get connectivity, that'll do for now, just for testing purposes. Get rid of the modulator. Power connector could be a problem because obviously again you've got female connector with holes so it's very difficult to get in to clean it. Whether it'd be possible to remove it, disassemble it and then clean all the parts I don't know. I may have a go at that, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, it could be a, a bit of a problem that one. One of the reasons I want to remove the modulator, not just so much because it's rusty, but at some point I want to recap this so it's going to make it a lot easier to get at all these caps to do that. Another problem area is this IDE connector here, this 44 pin one. Uh, some of the pins on this snapped off. I think I don't know if it's from corrosion or what, but they, I didn't really um, nudge them much and they just broke off at this end. I did actually drop the keyboard on this end and had to bend them back, but they were okay. So I'm going to have to remove that. And then obviously the other thing that needs to be done is just a general clean up of this anyway. So I think removing some of the parts first is going to be the best, best option, but whether it's possible to see this, that along the edges of some of these chips there's a lot of debris that need sort of cleaning off there's a lot collected down here and sort of it seems to be these edges so I want to clean all that off certainly before I try powering it up because it could be particles of rust and things in there which could cause a short which could cause a few major issues so I'll do all of that 
So I've got the solder sucker running, you can probably hear it in the background, I'm just going to chuck a bit more flux on there. Got some solder just to try and get a bit more solder on and we'll see how we go. Well, looking at this I'm going to need to put a bigger bit on because the, uh, the legs on these things are pretty chunky so I have to shut this down and should have thought of that first. So these tips have different size holes on them. You can't actually see the hole on these at the minute because they've got like a tin, solder tinning on them. So once this warms up that will that'll be able to be sucked away. So I shall try the larger one. I've just got to wait for that to cool down first before I can change it. Because I don't want my hands frying. <laughs> So I'm just going to check all of these pins are disconnected now, just, just a little nudge with the screwdriver is enough, you can see if the pins are still connected, there's a couple here that already that seem to be uh, attached to the side, sometimes you can, a little bit of force, you can break them free but there's a risk of damaging the pad by doing that. tiny nudge is all it needs, you don't want to put too much force, that one broke free easily, just a gentle push, but this one's a bit tougher so I'm not going to, so I'm not going to push that one too hard. It's very easy to forget where you've gotten to on this. Some of these are a little bit tougher because they've got big traces, so those traces are all the bigger traces will suck the heat out so they're going to be a bit harder to do. It's just a case of carefully going over each pin one pin at a time. There's no point rushing and breaking a trace, especially when the pins are this small. So that second one there is not, not the best. I can press down on these pins a little bit now and you can see it's pushing the socket. We must have something hanging on somewhere. Now it's just a little bit of solder around the actual legs stopping it going through so it's not attached it's just it's just catching on the on the holes in the PCB so if I flip this over now rip this up because if there is anything still attached or any blobs of solder it could still could have cause a bit of damage so just gently remove that and hopefully there'll be no damage on there there shouldn't be sort of have a quick try and have a quick look at this so we just have a quick look at the underside of this, it doesn't look like there's any pads attached on there so that should be okay and that can then be, the board can then be cleaned up at a later point when we're ready. So while I've got this small tip on I'm also going to try and remove where this oscillator was as well because that certainly wasn't the best. Top. Difficult 
find it on the underside. Yeah, it helps with the um, it helps with the solder socket to get the end of the tip as flat to the board as possible. If you tilt it slightly, you get a, a slight gap, so then it's drawing the air from between the top side of the board, or bottom in this case, and the edge of the tip. Whereas what you want is to have it completely sealed around where you're trying to solder from, and then it will pull the air from the underside of the board and clear the hole in the process. <laughs> seems to have cleared that. It always, I find it looks like the pads have uh, been removed sometimes but they've not. It's just the muck from the solder. They are very very small, very easy to damage. Alright this is cooled down so I'm just gonna switch this out if I can. We'll replace that one with bigger snibbers. So that's heated up now, you can see that sort of tinning on the, the nib, it's started to melt so as soon as I do that, that's cleared so that's now ready to use with a slightly larger hole. So we get a bit more flux on here again, I think I've done this about three times now, a bit more flux than solder at this rate. Give that one a bit more time. So these bits here, they're like a little claw, as you can see on this new connector, and they're supposed to sort of click through the hole, clip through the hole, and then you put plenty of solder on them, and that just gives this a bit more mechanical strength onto the board. So you're not just relying on these pins, which obviously can stress all the pads and the, the connectors on the board itself. So for these I'm going to try and just heat them, add a bit of flux and solder, heat them and then squeeze them together with some small pliers just to get rid of them. We'll see how that goes. It may not go at all but I'll give it a go. These are also on the ground plane so it's going to need a, a bit more heat. One thing I didn't actually do was check that these pins were all free. Just give them a bit of a nudge again. Yeah, they're okay. So they should come through. So the only thing holding this on is these great big uh, things here. Which are proving to be a bit more difficult to remove than I was expecting. So I'll just push that down with my thumb and then that you can perhaps see that's gone in a bit now so I'm trying to do the same with this side but obviously you've got to be careful because this bit can get hot. I'm sure there'll be a burnt finger before the end of the night so Bit. 
problem is you sometimes need more solder just to get decent contact to the board. There we go, that should be free now, I think. And then this side's still attached. Side. No lifted pads on there, as far as I can see. So that's that one. Let's try the next one. This flux is very, very sticky. So this time I'll remember to check these are all loose. It's a little tight but it is it's come away it's just a bit tight in the hole. So they should be all right. And same again just try and get some heat into these pads somehow. It's just a matter of holding the iron there and waiting patiently for this side to heat up enough to squeeze the thing together. So I've not, I'm not very well practicing this sort of thing, so I'm sort of learning as I go along. Anyway, that's cleared a lot of the solder away, but it may actually be a disadvantage. So removing the solder doesn't actually help, it makes it more difficult. Because you can't get the heat to travel. way around the joint then. Removed. Yeah, everything's looking okay. Obviously, they're quite big holes on this, unlike the uh, 44 pin IDE connector. These are a lot smaller, uh, sorry, a lot bigger. So they're easier to deal with. So I think the next thing I'm going to try and have a go at is this modulator. Get these big connections first. And then there's these three here, which are the video and audio and I think a power feed to the modulator. And that may be one as well actually over there. 